A Montclair, New Jersey man can point to quite an achievement on a shelf in his home. Seven Grammy Awards. Jazz musician Christian McBride, who has played with some greats, took home the gold once again Sunday night. He sat down with CBS 2's Alice Gaynor to talk about his career, what it's like making music in his basement, and what advice he has for young musicians. Congratulations. Seven. This is your seventh Grammy, correct? Seventh Grammy, yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, what's go what was going through your mind last night when they announced um, you know, the trio as the winners? Um, you know, uh Chick Korea had a um an amazing uh if, if I may use a, a sports parallel, he had an amazing batting average when it came to Grammy wins. So uh I think everyone knew that he stood a good chance to win because he he won more than he lost in that category. Uh, but more importantly, it was um, it was a nice way to sort of acknowledge uh, what we did with that trio. That trio stayed together for just over a decade and to work with Chick in various settings uh, over the course of 25 plus years, uh, it, it, it really meant a lot to get that Grammy last night. What sort of emotions were you going through? I mean, were you, were you a little bit sad? What, was it a celebratory? You know, what, what was going through your mind? I got to tell you, I was, um, I, I felt like, uh, I felt like Chick was there, you know. Uh, something about all of the music that he left us and uh, his legacy, uh, I still feel his presence, you know. And I know people say that often when uh, really, big important people pass away but this was uh i mean not only was he a friend but uh th this legacy he left in in the jazz world is is so big is so vast is so strong is so crucial um to generations of of musicians uh his his spirit is very much still here so i i didn't feel like this was a sad moment this felt like a yeah that's right kind of moment you know now, where are where were you when it was announced? Were you at home? Oh yeah, we were in the TV room. <laughs> now, normally, I mean, would you be out in LA for the uh, for the ceremony? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, had 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 we not still been in a, a, a pandemic, I know we're getting out of it. You know, there, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, but uh, yeah, we would have been in LA. Was Definitely. it a special? You know, watching from home. You know, um, that wasn't the first time my wife, Melissa, and I watched the Grammys from home. I believe it was 2015, I think it was. Uh, Melissa got sick, and uh, we had to cancel our trip to L.A., so we just watched the live feed. We got dressed up anyway and watched the live feed from home. So uh, this th watching the Grammys from home wasn't foreign to us, but uh, I mean, it, I, I enjoyed it ju just as much. Was it just as special or is it like, all right, I've won seven now, I mean. <laughs> no, they're always special. They're always special. When, when, they, when they, uh, a group of people, uh, many of whom who we respect, you know, people in the music industry, other musicians, uh, when they say, we like what you do, that, that always feels good. So tell me some more about your life and your work. You know, you live in New Jersey. You're a Philly native. Yes. Went to Born and raised in Philly. Yeah. So tell me how, um, you know, in Montclair, is the community super excited for you? You know, when, do people know you when they see you on the street? <laughs> uh, yeah, they always say, um, uh, move, move your car out of the way or something. No, it's, uh, no, Montclair, as, as you probably know, uh, this is, this town is like an artist colony. It's really amazing. Like, all the musicians and um, actors and visual artists that live here. It's, uh, it, it, you know, it's almost like Greenwich Village West, you know? And so uh, it's, it's wonderful to walk around the neighborhood here and see a lot of musicians and, and, you know, people I look up to. I mean, I haven't been out today at all, except to go get the, uh, bring up the recycling bins from the street, but uh I don't know what the rest of the neighborhood thinks. Well, I've gotten a lot of nice 
text messages today. So it, it was a good feeling. Grammy winners. They're just like us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, got, got to take, got to put that garbage out uh, every Sunday night. Who cares if you win a Grammy? So, um, you know, this must mean a lot to the kids. Your work with uh, Jazz House kids, you know, they're learning from a Grammy award winner. This must mean a heck of a lot to them. Well, you know, I think uh, the young people who we work with at Jazz House Kids, uh, yeah, it, it's nice to know that there's a Grammy attached to your name and, and to your resume. But more importantly, I think they appreciate the experience. Like, like I, I, I wrote on, on my social media pages the other day, the real Grammy for me was getting to play with Chick Corea. You know, that meant more to me than having something on my mantle you know, uh, and I think the young people who we work with, I think they appreciate that more. You know, it's like, wow, you played with Chick Corea for 26 years. What was that like? You know, so uh, I think it's the experience that they really appreciate. But it is nice to have Grammy uh, award winner on the resume. <laughs> so tell me more about, you know, you host, um, is it a, a few radio programs? Yeah, uh, Jazz Night in America, which is made uh, at WBGO in, in Newark, uh, distributed by NPR, and uh, The Lowdown, Conversations with Christian on Sirius XM. And you work with Jazz House Kids, your artistic director there. Yes, which was uh, uh, started by my wife, Melissa Walker. Uh, she started that organization in 2002. So uh, next year, we, we got a big uh, 20th anniversary coming up and my 50th birthday. So next year is going to be a big year. Wow. And, and any um, talk, you know, are, are you working on any new music, any new albums at all? Yes. Uh, I have a couple of things in the pipeline. Um, there's a, a digital streaming platform called Cobuzz. I'm not sure if you're familiar with, but you know, it's, it's along the same lines as Spotify and, and Tidal. Uh, Pandora, those 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 streaming platforms, and uh, this is a uh, very high end audio. It's, uh, it's it's you know for the audio files, you know, but uh, it's a, an incredible uh, platform. And I just did an EP for Cobuzz. Uh, I actually don't know when it's going to be released, but uh, it's going to be soon. And uh, I've gone back into my archives a little bit, and uh, there's going to be a live at the village vanguard uh album coming out uh of my quintet inside straight this is a from a gig we did back in 2014 so we're going to release that as an album uh i guess uh is that this fall or uh early next i can't remember but yes there's two things i'm working on right now okay and what and besides music you know what else are you in do you have time for anything else oh yeah i um I got lots of hobbies. I mean, uh, I moonlight as a sports writer on the side, believe it or not. Uh, I have a couple of articles that uh, were posted on Bleacher Report. Um, <laughs> and, and, what are you a uh, fan of? Who, what, what, uh, what are your teams? Oh, all the Philly teams. You know, even, even though I haven't lived in Philly for a very, very long time, uh, my heart is still at home. You know, I left, I, I graduated from high school in 1989. I moved to New York City and I lived in New York for 16 years before uh, I got married and moved here to Montclair. Uh, but no matter where I've lived, I'm all Eagles, Sixers, Phillies, and Flyers all the way. Oh, man, one of those Philly guys. <laughs> <laughs> got to stick with the hometown. Oh, man, all right, I get it, I get it. Um... <laughs> and, I'm an, I'm an, and I'm also a law and order junkie. So if there was ever a, uh, a game show about uh, American television history, I'm sure I would ace it. Well, they have the new one coming out April 1st. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, where do you keep the Grammys? I don't see any behind you. I see a lot of uh, records. Oh, they're, they're upstairs. <laughs> do you have a special place for them or, or you know? I, I had a special place for them, but uh, Melissa said, I think they look better here. And, those, she, and so she moved them into our, our TV room. Um, she's made a nice, a nice place for, uh, for our photos, the Grammys and, and other stuff we have in there. So, but down here in, in this, this is the basement, this is my office. Uh, it's all the records. 
and there's more over there you can't see them lots of books uh one of my bases and my electric piano is over here so this is uh this is the workspace right here i gotta ask you you know how did you where did you get your love of music from how did you even become involved in, in playing an instrument uh my father my father lee smith is also a professional bass player my great uncle howard cooper is also a professional bass player so i was surrounded by musicians and people in the music business uh my mother's brother my uncle butch he he's he passed away many years ago uh he was a promotions and advertising manager at WHAT radio in Philly. So uh, as far back as I can remember, I was seeing live music. Wow. And looking back, you know, were you ever that struggling musician um, or did you always, you know, do okay? You know, what's your background when you, when you started out? What, what were things like for you? I, I have to tell you, um, even the days that would on paper seem like struggling, I got to tell you, I had fun because there was nothing more exciting than living in New York on my own in the late 80s, no less. You know, New York was still dangerous, you know, and early 90s and going to jazz clubs and going to meet these musicians and sitting in with people and just kind of getting my feet wet and learning the ropes. Uh, and there were plenty of times when, you know, I was nervous that my rent wasn't going to be paid on time and, and it wasn't. You know, uh, I got a few shut off notices from the company then known as Bell Atlantic, <laughs> you know, um, but I always knew it was going to be OK. I mean, honestly, I always knew it was going to be OK. The one time um, that things were rough for me, I, I was living in Brooklyn. I was living in Williamsburg, um, a pre hipster area uh, era, and uh, I remember um, I I was I was supposed to move out by December 1st. So I found an apartment on like 9th and Broadway on like November 5th. And so I had it all hooked up and I was ready to move out like a week or so later. And for whatever reasons, I, I can't remember what happened, but the deal fell through. And the guy who was taking my place in the apartment had already started to, you know, make his way to New York. And so I had to find an apartment like quick, like within two weeks. And uh, it wasn't quite as easy as I thought it was going to be. And I remember I, that's the one time where I felt like I'm, I'm in trouble and I don't know what to do. But um, you'll love this story. I, I, I can't remember how I found this person, but the, uh, the person who helped me found, find my apartment, she didn't say one word to me about her personal life and you know she showed me all these different apartments and she said oh you're a musician oh okay great so she uh she finally gets me into my apartment and after it's all over she says you may have heard of my father i said who's your father she said tony bennett <laughs> wow. i said oh you gotta be kidding me so uh i i think that was the musician ghost you know that was like the the musician thing in the air that that helped me find that apartment. So thank you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Any other stories that stick out to you? Um, you know, how many? How many? How long has your career been now? What age did you start? Would you say? Um, you know, when people say when did you become a professional, you know, I I have to be I have to really think about that because if professional means someone actually hired you. To, to pay you, you know, uh, technically my professional career started at age 12, but that was for like some school donors and like the band got paid 10 bucks a piece. Uh, but I would say that my, uh, like the first real band I was ever in where we worked regularly, uh, I was 15. So uh, that's been about, that's been 35 years. Impressive. Very nice. Yeah, I think I'm counting right. Yeah, yeah, 30, <laughs> 35 years. I'll check it later. I'm not oh, going Almost, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, 34, whatever it is, 30 something. Um, you know, any, anything else you want to add? Anything you might want to share with future, you know, musicians? Yeah, you know, um, it's so easy to be, 
distracted and swayed by things that aren't that important. Uh, as a musician, there's a certain skill level that uh, the people I look up to all attained. They, they, they didn't become great musicians so they could sell a lot of records, so they could get a lot of social media followers. They did this because they wanted to be great at something, at a particular skill. And when I think of people like Chick Corea, uh, when I think of people like Joe Henderson, McCoy Tyner, Freddie Hubbard, Betty Carter, all of these great le jazz legends who I had a chance to work with, they knew that their musical legacy was far more important than any records that they sold or, or anything that, you know, they didn't need anybody to tell them how great they were. They knew that their skill set was as such they could work with anyone at any time in any genre, any place. And uh, so I would tell younger musicians, always worry about getting better. Get better. <laughs>